Hello friends, this video on chemical effects of electric current part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction, Electric Current, Good Conductors and Bad Conductors of Electricity, Chemical Effects of Electric Current and Electroplating. So chemical effects of electric current. So when we talk about electric current, what are we talking about basically? We are talking about the electricity, a type of energy which exists due to the flow of electrons. Looks difficult or sounds difficult? Not to worry. We are going to talk about electric current in detail in this lesson. A simple example. When you switch on, your bulb glows. When you switch it off, it immediately turns off. Now, what is that magic that happens inside a bulb that as soon as you switch it on, so the switch is located somewhere else, you just, you, all you need to do to make the bulb glow and give you uh, a lot of light is just to press a switch. So it is that simple. But have you ever thought how exactly is the bulb glowing when you are switching it on? So how that happens? That happens due to electricity. Another interesting example where you would have experienced electricity is have you ever yourself or have you ever saw somebody else trying to touch an open electrical outlet and then getting a shock? So experiencing electric shock so that is another scenario where you can actually feel the presence of electricity. So electricity provides power to various buildings, electric devices and automobiles. If we talk about devices like a camera, a battery, battery operated, so many devices exist. Whether you talk about the computers, you talk about the entire electric appliances in your house, the fans, the bulbs, the tube lights, everything works due to electricity. If you talk about the battery operated devices like your mobile phones, uh, the uh, alarm clocks or the cameras, there are so many things which are dependent on battery. Why? Because battery acts as a source of electricity. So in this lesson, we are going to talk about the chemical changes or the reactions which will take place when electric current is passed through an object or an electric current is passed through a solution. So that is what we are going to talk about. Now before we get into exactly that topic, let us start with the very basics of electricity. What is electric current? How it passes through a particular object? Whether it can pass through all the objects or not? So first we will clarify all these basics and then we will try to understand the chemical changes which takes place in an object when electricity passes through it. So that is the agenda of our lesson here. So what is electric current? Electric current is the flow of electric charges and that's all. Now the question is what are these charges? So you might not be knowing a lot about charges but you must be knowing a substance can be positively charged, it can be negatively charged, it can have neutral charge, right? So any particle which carries a charge with it, that is called a charged particle. So we will talk about electric charges in more detail in our next lesson. So you will get a better idea that time. So now when these charged particles, they move. So movement of these charged particles builds current. So and how do we actually measure it that how much current is flowing? It is measured as the rate of flow of charge. That means how many charges have flown in a particular period of time. So in simple words, it is like yeah, just consider charges like uh, small children. Okay. So it is like you have a big playground where children are running from one end to the other. So how many children ran from one end to another in one hour? So that gives you the rate of flow of children. Similarly here, the charges flow from one place to another and these flow of charges constitute current and how many charges had flown over a period of time that is how we measure current. So current is the rate of flow of charge. 
So the SI unit to measure current is ampere. So th this is the unit which we use normally. Now I will give you a very small example to show that electric current flows through a circuit. Now again circuit is a new term here. Just look at this then you will understand what I mean by your circuit, what I mean by electric current. All you need to do is take a bulb, you take a battery, okay. So this is your bulb, this is your battery and now what you do, now if you observe closely you will see that every battery, just try to observe any pencil battery which may be there at your home. So observe the battery, you will see that the battery will have the positive and the negative terminals marked. So if you look at a battery, a battery would look something like this and you will see that the ends will be marked as positive and negative like this. So now in this diagram, this is the battery, this is the positive terminal, this is the negative terminal. So you connect the positive and the negative terminal of the battery to the two terminals of this bulb. So that is how you prepare this circuit, okay? And there is a key, key is the switch, right? So it is a simple circuit which will just show you how current flows through it. So in between you keep a switch. So in case you think that finding a switch or fixing a switch here is difficult. So what you can do is when I say that the switch is off, that means the circuit is not complete. So as you can see here, a gap is there. So that means you have not yet joined the two wires. Now as long as you do not make it complete, current will not be able to flow. Correct? So that time it means that the switch is off. Now what happens when you switch it on? So as you switch it on, the circuit becomes complete. So now what happens? The current starts to flow. So current has got a path. Now as soon as current starts to flow, current reaches the bulb. Now if the current is high enough, it is able to blow the bulb. Now you might be curious to know how the flow of current is able to blow the bulb. Now actually, we will talk about this in detail. Uh, but for your information, inside the bulb you have a filament and as the current flows through the filament, so this filament gets heated up and when the fil filament gets heated up, it blows. So that is, that is basically how a bulb blows. So what did you see here? You saw that as soon as you switched it on, that means as soon as a circuit was complete, Circuit is nothing but a path through which the charges can flow. Now as I was giving you the example of children running from one end of the park to the other. So they need a ground where they can run, right? They cannot run on the sky. So they need a ground. So that ground is nothing but the path for the children to run. So similarly, these charges also need a path to flow. So if you break the path in between, like how you did before. So when it was switched off or when these wires were not connected, so the path was not complete. So even if the charges flow till here, how are they going to cross this empty space? So they will not be able to flow. So as soon as the circuit becomes complete, charges get a path to flow and when the charges flow, current is formed and due to this current, these electric appliances which have filaments get heated up and they glow. So here what do we see that this entire path is termed as the electric circuit. So this is what we call as circuit and when we talk about current it is about the electric charges which move through this external circuit. So the charges are actually flowing through this circuit. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.